What did an awesome report card, a clean bill of health from the doctor, an errand with your mother, and a sleepover at your friends all have in common? They might have all led to a trip to McDonald land. And we couldn't have been more excited. If you remember your visits to McDonald's during the golden age of fast food, then you're in the right place. You've entered the Gen Experience. I'm Victor, and I was there buying anything the clown prince of corporate America was selling, including himself and all of his friends. Wide-eyed and captivated by creative marketing and one-of-a-kind experiences, convincing our parents to take us to the Golden Arches was a weekly challenge, and one we didn't always win. Relive those bygone days of unwrapping the magic, along with a burger, from their paper package and get ready for the big news on the future of the McDonald Land characters. Click the like and let's get started. And since it contains no calories, press subscribe to ensure more incredible time machine content. McDonald's was a treat. As kids, we couldn't wait until our next visit, but it could be weeks in between. Our parents tried desperately to keep us eating well-balanced meals at home, but the constant barrage of colorful characters sparking our imaginations kept us chipping away at them until on occasion it paid off. And sometimes mom just didn't want to cook another meal and gave in easy. And before I go any further, for any of you out there who might instantly see McDonald's in the title and just parrot the often repeated boring and meaningless comments like who would go there or why would you eat there the food is so gross do us all a favor press the back button this isn't for you this is for all of us who when coming home from a long trip saw the tall red and yellow sign high above the hills beyond the highway exit that your dad was now slowing the car down to take the beacon for a much needed and deserved late dinner was enough to get any kid excited and a tired dad too and why not? Billions and billions served. Can't be wrong, right? It was what it was. It was fast food. It was burgers and fries with lots of sodium. I didn't know a parent who thought this was how to regularly feed your children, but they saw the harmlessness of the irregular trip that gave their children such joy and themselves a little break. So it's a win-win. No matter if the visit was on a road trip, an after-school surprise, or weekend lunch with friends, the bright colors will never dull in our memory. The mansard roofs with heavy brown tiles and the accents of orange, red, and yellow were comfortable. It was like visiting a friend's house. Grimace, the professor, Fry Guys, and the Hamburglar were all there. Maybe not in person, but in the oversized playground equipment featuring Big Mac the Cop or a Captain Crook's slide, as well as fanciful artwork and merchandise found all around the store. Featured displays and giveaways all included the familiar faces in a sort of McDonald Land world building. They had been part of our Saturday morning experiences after all. Colorful, cheerful, happy images interrupted every cartoon, and sometimes they were just as eagerly anticipated as the animation we were watching. And by now, they were all family. Opening those heavy windowed doors into the dining area, you saw that familiar and consistent tile floor as you headed up to the counter. You quickly perused that old brown menu with the white letters, but usually settled for the same old favorite. We anticipated opening those very identifiable and branded containers. Hell, everything was branded from the napkins to the ashtrays. Paper or styrofoam kept our meals separate and were delivered by what can only be described as the absolute most delighted employees ever seen. Their complete Stepford wife appearance had us daydreaming of one day working there. Just think of all the french fries they could eat. These ever smiling positive employees were the key to the franchise's success, as well as the muted brown, white, and yellow uniforms which were just as recognizable as the food and seemed to suggest burgers. They happily took orders, delivered meals, and kept the whole place spotless all the time. I can't remember a time not seeing someone proudly wiping a table or mopping the floor, which is far from what any current staff member at a local McDee's can handle. When the foam containers became extinct, I wish the friendly staff wouldn't have disappeared with them. Experiencing a meal at McDonald's was always consistent, exactly what we expected. Sans Ronald and his friends popping up at your table. That would be freaky. The restaurant was still home of the fun-loving crew of characters, though, and they encouraged me to keep ordering the most current Happy Meal. Although original themes like Star Trek and the Transformers helped, too. Even into our teens, we were drawn to the burger-shaped stools when catching up with friends. With your own set of wheels, McDonald's was perfect for that off-campus lunch period or a weekend meeting place. A convenient and welcome place to meet up after the big game or before a weekend outing. Even a date night, yes, it was not uncommon as a dinner date. 
McDonald's took care of us in a variety of ways throughout the Gen experience, helping parents make memorable moments for their children with impromptu visits and gaining parent points when a buddy stayed overnight and dinner was under the old arches. And who can forget the ultimate birthday party when Ronald celebrated you as his guest of honor with all of your closest friends? Remember these? The hand puppets that got you all sweaty? Priceless. McDonald's thought of us during the holidays too. Christmas, or any other gift giving reason, meant only one thing, the much loved gift certificates. We knew people who eagerly anticipated these little tokens of appreciation, and we watched their faces light up as they were given their floppy little book. These were handy gifts that were just perfect for those extra people in our lives who deserved a little something for how they made us feel or what they did for all of us. And I'll admit, these were especially welcome back when the menu was still reasonably priced for what it is. They offered convenient services that we used and appreciated. They did a great job of selling us on those ideas too, and they had us hook, line, and sinker. And forget simple tray liner activities, these guys had a full-on magazine, free to customers, published bi-monthly. You didn't really have a birthday unless it was at McDonald's, right? Although the Burger King birthday crown was enough to make all your little friends jealous too. Those parties and the gift certificates did gangbuster business. Of course, Hosting birthdays and selling gift certificates to hand out are no doubt self-serving for the company, but what the hell isn't? It's not like they ran a charity or something. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, they did. McDonald's was well-respected in the community. They backed local events and sponsored school activities, often with that huge yellow bucket of orange drink, whatever that was. They were also a great place to work, a great starter job, an awesome high school job. Yes, they had been taking care of us for a long time, even if mostly subliminally. You saw the restaurants and the newspaper ads. You heard commercials on the radio and the TV, but they were also in movies and even major sponsors for world events like the Olympics. Their logo was no stranger to sporting events. It may sound strange to have Olympians or the Olympics in fast food commercials, but sports were often featured in the ads and only made McDonald's more accessible and relatable, while their direct competitor, BK, found success mocking the popular brand. It was simply a case of sore losing. Today, most celebrities would be too afraid to take on a contract as spokesperson for the brand, even if they did eat there, but not in the Golden Arches Golden Age. That was a key success story for any star and the public took notice. Their marketing was down to earth and with their slogans and jiggles, they had us humming their tunes all the way to the counter. McDonald's was where we felt comfortable. Always warmly welcomed and taken care of, especially at breakfast when that morning employee walked around and offered your parents a little refill of coffee in those ever so cheery white porcelain coffee cups. Remember those, the ones mom and dad grabbed on their way out the door so they could enjoy bottomless fresh coffee in their own mug while we tore open tiny syrup containers to pour over butter covered hotcakes and sausage. The invention of that combination is a true testament to the lasting power of the golden age of fast food, and we are forever in its debt. Walking around and refilling coffee for the small clutch of seniors who meet there each morning was just part of a successful service model we came to expect from their advertising. Advertising that tended to lean sentimental and always flirted with sappy. But we wouldn't have it any other way. McDonald's commercials were among our earliest images of love, humanity, sexuality, and even rapture. They made us rethink something we thought we knew everything about, how we interacted with and consumed food, inviting us inside the television and toward the light. Hey, Jim. Yeah? Aren't you coming? Yeah. This marketing was an important entry on the soundtrack of our life, a soundtrack that included hits like the Big Mac song, and the very popular menu song. These McDonald's marketing creations stood the test of time, stayed with us as part of the landscape of our lives. We were all in on it together. No one was immune. An entire population learned these songs. I'm certain there was a promotion where you could get free food for being able to repeat them when you ordered. So you practiced at work and with your friends. Hell, you could even get a 45, a record of this at the store to learn it at home. We all participated in on their tactics. And don't even get me started on Monopoly, that thing was addictive. They engaged us with shared experiences and made us loyal fans and customers. That is until they completely changed their model in the 21st century, trying so hard to be a hip coffee shop instead of sticking with what they did best. Got it? Got it! Okay, now you do it! Big Mac McDeals, 
It was memorable to run into family friends on a Sunday morning and ask them to join you at your table for a meal. With those coffee cups in hand, the parents could take some casual weekend time to visit with those they seldomly saw while the combined kids scampered in the awesome playground outside in the blazing sun on hot metal slides with very little supervision. Just how we liked it. And we have McDonald's to thank. It was a gathering spot, a friendly place to connect, to make memories. Look around. We will never see or feel the likes of the golden age of McDonald's or its contemporaries again. The golden age of fast food is dead. I don't even want to call it postmodern because it's more like a dark, dystopian Blade Runner age where there is no prospect of returning to its former glory. You couldn't ignore the marketing during the golden age. The 70s and the 80s, McDonald's knew how to emotionally connect with us. Kids may not have had the money to spend, but they were the target audience. We were the ones that got our parents to go, to take us and our friends to spend money at McDonald's. Today, that strategy seems to be flipped. The once bright and frenetic architecture of optimism that invited us in has been redesigned into a Starbucks on Paxil. The new designs are like sad buildings being forced to smile, but everyone can see the cracks in the shell. At least the originals looked like they were having fun. Today, with a lack of good jingles, the brevity of advertising, the flash in the pan marketing of the that's that, what's next speed of consumer consumption for any kind of media results in nothing that lasts. Nothing is built for longevity. And I'm afraid the soundtrack of the current generation equates to a a cassette single. How much nostalgia are they really creating? But wait, what is this? The Grimace birthday meal? This is a very recent promotion at the store. Yes, Grimace, the big purple gumdroppy thing. He's back in visuals and advertising. The company that once discarded all of these McDonald Land characters is beginning to embrace the long forgotten crew of the Golden Arches. What we uncovered actually a few years ago was an awakening of the brand. McDonald's chief marketing and consumer experience officer Tariq Hassan told Yahoo Finance Live, people reconnecting and realizing that there was a value to this brand that frankly, I think we had forgotten and we'd lost a bit of our swagger. Next up is Hamburglar. He will be seen throughout national marketing efforts once more. Unlike his 2015 sexy bad boy, this time he'll be appearing more similar to the image crafted for the character during the 1980s, but with the 2023 standards of screen resolution. That bodes well for the franchise, although it can never compare to its former glory. Who doesn't remember making that leap when you looked at your mom and made the ultimate grown-up decision to graduate from Happy Meal to Big Mac? That was a red-letter day. Eating at McDonald's would never be the same after that. We were there to not only see Birdie the early bird hatch, but see this unsure aviator become the living representation of breakfast at McDonald's. Those of us of a certain age can look back and see the glass display cases of figurines and merchandise, even classic Happy Meal toys. Lucky for us, the fast food giant would eventually offer those toys as a separate item to purchase. So even as an adult, when we couldn't live without the newest Happy Meal prize, we could get one, but we could have it while enjoying our quarter pounder with cheese. Good times, great taste indeed, McDonald's. Victor here. If you loved that YouTube time machine or just wish you could have been there to live in the era that gave us the greatest stuff, you can right here in the Gen Experience. Now look around the channel and don't forget those shorts to find other fantastic shows like this one. Now please click that like and consider supporting me by pressing subscribe. I'd really appreciate you helping me make great content for the future. I hope to see you all again soon. Until next time.